Tibi. Monsieur Tibi, though, was one of the richest men in the city, and he decided it was time for Obi to get married. Well, using his connections, he got Ovi named Rex, the king of Carnival. And he was going to have the biggest Mardi Gras parade New Orleans ever done seen. So he invited all the unmarried girls in New Orleans to come to the party. And they had so many people from far away that was invited that they had to send out those invitations by carriage and by horseback. And even by Piro, for Saint-Drion's house, the invitations was received with great joy. Mon Dieu, my goodness, we are all going to Rex Mardi Gras Ball, they said. And saint asked, and moi? And me? And they said, oui, et tu? But the Belmare said, of course you can go, but you got to finish all your chores, and if you have something to wear, Sondrion worked hard all day and made red beans and rice for dinner. But when it was time for the ball and the carriage arrived, her bell mare said, Oh, ça c'est triste, oh, that's so sad. But Sondrion, you're not dressed, you can't go to the ball. Oh, not going. Ça c'est dommage, her stepsister said. But you know they was making fun of her. Now, poor Beth Sondrion went up in her attic room, and she sank sadly down in her bed of moss. She was feeling tout à fait mal. She was feeling very sad. But tout à coup, all of a sudden, she heard a tap, 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 tapping at her window, and it was Monsieur Pigeon, the pigeon. And he told her, go down to the levee. So they ran down there, and Miss Jamie, oh my goodness, her friends had not forgotten her, no. They made her the most pretty ball dress you ever done saw. Well, she put that on, she said, oh, mon Dieu, ça c'est bon, merci, merci, oh, that is so pretty, thank you so much. And then she had to yell to the carriage that was taking the mama and the stepsisters to the ball, and she said, arrête. Well, the carriage stopped, but her stepsister said, that's my bow, that's my ring, that's my necklace, that's my earring, and they took it all off of her, next thing you know, she's sitting in the dust, and the carriage left without her. Oh, now you can imagine, she was so sad, but all of a La Petite Fille ran to the levee in tears, but soon she realized there was somebody with her. And she looked up and she saw a beautiful lady. Sit right here. Bonsoir, madame. Qu'est-ce que vous? Good afternoon, my lady. And who are you? She said, I'm your fairy marraine. I'm your fairy godmother. And I've come to help you. From the sky came a magic wand. She said, now dry your eyes, child, because we got some work to do for you to go to that ball. Alone, eh? She said, come on, let's go. So she held up her magic wand, and the first thing we see is a nice couchon, which a couchon is a squash. And she turned that squash. Dog. I'm gonna get to that in a minute. Have a seat, you can see. With that very gra uh, with that magic wand, the Maran said, and now look, Grigri, the magic's gonna begin. So start moving your hand like this. We're gonna make some magic for Sondrion. Now repeat after me. Hot food. Couch, couch. Oh. 
Come on, Magic. Push, push, push. And with that, that cushion turned into a beautiful carriage. And she said, what we need now is some ecrivi, the crawfish. So she got some of the ecrivi, and she brought six of them to La Marin. And Marin touched them with a magic wand, and she said her magic words. Here we go again. Hot food Go, Kush Kush. Come on, magic. Push, push, push. And with that, them crawfish turn into some beautiful red horses. Pierre Le Pigeon, the pigeon, he became the fine footman. And Le Crab, the crab, became the fat coachman. And that's who all those red things are that you saw a little earlier. Oh, me quite it. craw. Don't you look so nice? What you think of that? Sondre said, Tremendific, it's magnificent. She said, Mello? So let's go. Rencontez-vous. And she had to tell us something. She said that at minuit, at midnight, she had to leave or everything she had was going to turn right back just like it used to be. She said, now remember, minuit, midnight, bon chance, good luck, child. So the carriage crossed the river on the ferry and rolled up St. Canal Street toward the grand ballroom of the Roosevelt Hotel. And when Sondrion's coach arrived, Rex saw the très belle fille, and he helped her up on the steps. And all the guests in the ballroom turned to look at Sondrion with Rex the king. And what do you think Sondrion was wearing? That's right, she was wearing a beautiful blue dress. And she had her beautiful bustle on the top of that. I'm sorry, I'm having a little trouble finding my bustle here, but that's okay. So we're going to leave our pretty ball gown right here. And the guest whispered, who is that treasure leafy? Who is that pretty girl? And Rex led her to the dance floor. And before that first dance finished, he was on a mois with her. He was in love. They danced all night long. Well, Sandrina was startled because all of a sudden the chime started to ring and she realized it's midweek. It's midnight. So from St. Louis Cathedral, she heard them bells ringing. To Goku, all of a sudden, she ran from the dance floor down a large hallway, and she went to the ferry, and Rex was running after her. And he was shouting, Vien ici, come here. Hey, uh, it's wrong. All the chimes rang until dos, 12 o'clock. Everything became as it was before. All but Sondrion's beautiful glass slipper. Sondrion got home and she was out of breath and she was so sad. But she had a dream about her magical night and she still had one of her slippers that didn't turn back like it was before. So she walked upstairs to the attic room and she put her slipper underneath her mattress and she went to sleep thinking about her love for Rex. But for my then, early in the morning, LaBelle saw her stepsisters. They was all chattering away about the pretty girls they saw at the ball the night before. Ella, how could she run off at Minui like that, they were saying. Oh, I said, fool, that's foolish, that. But Sondrion listened to all that, but she didn't say nothing. 
all of a sudden, they had all these trumpets blowing at Gallia Hall, and the crowds came out. And Obi Thibodeau, the Rex, he stood before the people, and he held up his glass slipper. And he said, this is the slipper of my queen. I will marry the mademoiselle whose foot will fit this slipper. My court will visit each and every house in this city, and the search was on to tweet real quick. When Rex got to Saint-Trion's little shotgun house, her bell cells was all fighting over being the first one to try on that slipper. Then Saint-Trion came out and she said, May I try, s'il vous plaît? Please? And the man said, May we? Oui. Yes, you may. Oh, comment ça fait? Shouted the bell cells. How you like that? She is Saint-Trion. For sure that she will not fit her because she is not Rex's queen. We are ordered by Rex to try this slipper on every girl. So he tried it on Sondrion's foot. Now what you think happened? It fit. And then she took out her glass slipper and she put it on her other foot. And when she did that, all the magic came back and she was back in her beautiful blue evening gown. Then Ben of Rex's court hurried off to St. Charles Avenue where Ovi Thibodeau was waiting. And Sondrion told Ovi and his family the whole story of what happened. Well, they jumped on the streetcar and they went straight to the French Quarter to get married at St. Louis Cathedral. Sondrion and Rex move into a maison, a house next to the Mississippi River, where Sondrion could still have her sibonami, her little friends. And as they say in the Crescent City, les les bon temps roulés, and they did. C'est tout, that's all. Bye bye, Sha. What? Take some video. Tell me that again. What are you asking me? Because I wanted to show everybody the pretty dress. Hi. Yeah. Hi. On the magic wand, the magic wand with La Mare. Everybody, we want to thank you very much for coming out. A amusement performers is glad to have been here. Our services were donated to the church today. Also, we need volunteers to go over to that blood mobile and volunteer to donate a little bit of your blood. The turnout has been horrible today, and we'd like to see some of you big, strong, strapping men go over there and give a little bit of blood to this worthy, worthy cause. Hi. Bring the microphone over there inside. They can talk over there inside from it. Hey, so how do you like the great Jolie, the Cajun storyteller? I thought it was great. And what about you, man? What do you think about Jolie, the Cajun storyteller? She's wonderful. We love her. We love her accent. She's so authentic. She tells the story. And she's a real Cajun. <laughs> you okay, baby? Yeah, you have the accent.